Welcome to Chapter 2, Nutrition Tools, Standards, and Guidelines. Determining Nutrition Needs by Professor Tammy. Learning Objectives 1. State the significance of Dietary Reference Intakes, DRI, and Daily Values, DVS Nutrient Standards. Nutrient Recommendations there are two sets of standards for healthy people's energy and nutrient intakes. The first one is Dietary Reference Intakes, DRI, and the second one is Daily Values, DV. For the Dietary Reference Intakes, DRI, there are sets of five lists of values for measuring nutrient intake of healthy people in the United States and Canada. One, Estimated Average Requirements, EAR. Two, Recommended Dietary Allowances, RDA, which you probably heard about. 3. Adequate Intake, AI. 4. Tolerable Upper Intake Levels, UL. 5. Acceptable Macronutrient Distribution Ranges, AMDR. The Dietary Reference Intake DRI Committee has set recommended intakes and limits for all, such as vitamins and minerals, and carbohydrates, lipids, and protein. So what does that mean? We'll be talking about that in the next slides. The daily values, DV. The nutrient standards used on food labels and on grocery stores and restaurant signs. You can find them on your food labels. So if you go check any of the food labels, from containers, potato chip bags, cereals, you'll see that there are daily values, state test DV on your um, food facts, food labels. The DV reflects highest nutrient needed among all population groups. So when you think about it, it's very generalized. Uh, the DV allows comparisons among foods, not nutrient intake goals for individuals. So it is for the general population, not for individuals. Determining nutrient needs. Dietary reference intakes, DRI, identify one, the amount of nutrient needed to prevent deficiency disease in healthy people. Two, amount of nutrient that may reduce the risk of chronic disease. Three, the upper level of safety for nutrient intake. So what does this mean? There's a standard defined for energy, nutrients, and other dietary components, how much you need. The goal is intended to be met through foods. Sometimes it can be met through supplements, but the goal, again, is to be met through foods. It applies to an average daily intake, how much you're having per day, not per week or year or month. Each um, daily recommended intake, DRI category, serves as a unique purpose. So the DRI also estimates um, how this applies to healthy people. One, it may be different for specific groups. Why? Because adjustment needs to be required for people with medical problems who are malnourished or other conditions. So. The difference is that this is not for the individual. It won't be catered for each person specifically, but it's a recommendation for the population in general. So as far as the recommendations, there's no minimal levels nor optimal levels. The adequate intake um, is over time, and the goal is to attempt to get 100% of the DRI recommended, recommended intake. Estimated average requirement, EAR. They deal with nutrition research and policy. They assess nutrient intakes of population. So what they mean is they set recommendations for different life stage and gender groups. And what they mean by life stage is like infant, toddler, child, teenager, adult, and elderly. Each group requires different amount of nutrient intake. The average daily intake level of a nutrient 
that will meet the needs of half of the healthy people in a particular life stage and gender group. This used to determine the recommended dietary allowance, the RDA of a nutrient. Recommended dietary allowance, RDA. These are recommended nutrient intakes based on solid experimental evidence. The RDA meets needs of almost all healthy people. So the average daily intake level requires to meet the needs of 97 through 98 percent of healthy people in a particular life stage and gender group. So it meets about 97 through 98 percent of healthy people in each particular stage and gender group. Adequate intake, AI. There are recommended nutrient intakes. There's scientific evidence and educated guesswork, so they're based on observation and estimates from experiments. They're recommended average daily intake level for a nutrient that assumed to be adequate, so adequate, adequate intake, adequate. So the adequate intake was used when the RDA is not yet established. So before you know that became popular and say yes we're going to use the RDA. So the AI used vitamin D, vitamin K, fluoride, and chromium. Tolerable upper intake level, UL. So this is based on safety. If you're taking too much of a certain nutrients, are you going get to a potential toxic level. And sometimes you might not see certain nutrients like, oh, is there a toxicity level? Because there's no um, sufficient data to establish, you know, if you had a certain amount over of a certain nutrients will affect your health or your body. So the highest average daily intake level that is not likely to have any adverse effect of the health of most people is that what, that's what they're also observing. Like, what's the maximum you can take before this affects your health? Consumption of a nutrient at levels above the UL level, that's the tolerable upper intake level, is not considered safe. And we're going to talk about the inaccurate versus accurate view of nutrient intakes. So when you look at this, there's the naive view and also the accurate view. So the naive view is they're thinking, if you don't take these nutrients, it is a danger zone. Something bad's going to happen to you. So you, can, you should take these nutrients. It doesn't matter how much you take. You can take so much that you'll still be okay. So that's the naive point of view. As far as the accurate point of view is, there is a level of safety. And if you have too little of it, there's a marginal level that it won't really affect you. But if you go below a certain level or you haven't taken a nutrient for a very long time, you can be in the area of danger of deficiency. Unlike the naive point of view, this one has a tolerable upper intake level. So there is a tolerable up, um, upper intake level. And there's a marginal view. So even if you take too much of a certain nutrient, you're still kind of okay. But if you went overboard, there's a danger of toxicity. A lot of times, People don't really think, oh, if I'm going to have a multivitamin and then my B complex vitamin and then my B12 vitamin and then my B6, B1, and B2, that'll be okay because it'll flush all out. No, that, that can cause toxicity because the multivitamin has your B vitamins, your complex um, B vitamins have your B vitamins, and then you're taking extra B vitamins as well. Acceptable macronutrient distribution range, AMDR. 
So when you think of macronutrient, I want you to think of the three macronutrients because they give off energy. They are carbohydrate, fat, and protein. The range of energy intake from carbohydrate, fat, and protein is associated with reduced risk of chronic disease. Chronic disease is when you're when you have this disease for a period of time, a long period of time, like diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, those are chronic diseases. It's not just like, oh, I have it one day and I don't have it the other day. You're having this for a long time. That's what chronic disease means. The range of macronutrient intake that provides adequate levels of essential nutrients. So you need to know how much you need from each nutrient. What I mean by the nutrients are the carbohydrate, fat, and protein. Acceptable macronutrient distribution range, AMDR, intake ranges from for energy yielding nutrients. And these are the percentage which you would need to know. Carbohydrate 45 to 65 percent, fat 20 to 35 percent, protein 10 to 35 percent. You may also see these same percentages in my other slides for the carbohydrate, fat, and protein chapters. Estimated energy requirement, EER. They're not generous. It's said to maintain energy balance in a healthy adult, such as maintaining a healthy body weight. This is more individualized. It's particularly applied to a, in, in individuals, which you calculate the age, gender, height, weight, and physical activity, which we will see in the next slide. So if you're interested in your EER, you can click on that link. And the EAR, it estimates your energy requirement, what you need as an individual. And you'll see that they'll look at your height, weight, how active you are, and etc. See you soon, and remember to read the book.